Good morning. Hope everybody's had a great week. So in this video, then we wanted to go a little bit into how we're able to afford this trip. Obviously, we're both quitting our jobs, so we're not going to be having any disposable income. So in that sense, then we need to figure out how we managed to finance everything and make sure that we can sustain ourselves while we're going on a year's trip around the world. So with that, then in this video, we're going to be exploring exactly how we're planning on financing ourselves as we go to each of the countries that we're planning on visiting. Firstly, as many of you might remember from our Morocco series, we had a really long 12 hour delay flying from Toronto to what was supposed to be Casablanca. Not only did we have a major delay getting to Casablanca, but our flight that was only supposed to be one stopover ended up being two because we were rerouted from Lisbon to Marrakesh and then finally on our way to Casablanca. This unfortunate incident turned out to be a blessing in disguise. We ended up writing a really respectful letter to Tapir Portugal detailing the situation. And because of the fact that the EU has very strict compensation guidelines, unlike what you would see in North America, we ended up getting 900 euros worth of credit each that we have now put toward our flight to England as well as to Italy, essentially making them both free. That means that we're able to save our money and our aeroplan points and not use them um, until we're further into our trip. Now, before we continue on with the other ways that we finance this trip, then I do just want to put out a quick PSA about customer service. I've worked in hotels, I've been a bar person before, I have worked in customer service and tech support for pretty much most of my working life. Over time, I've been on the end of some pretty unpleasant conversations with people who barely even treated me like a human being. It's not fun. Those things, those experiences in particular, really stick with you as horrible experiences. And actually, to be honest with you, if it's a bad enough incident, then it gets put into a training for other people to inform them as to how to manage difficult situations. So with that, treat customer service agents with respect at all times. They are human beings. They are just doing their job. They're not trying to deliberately block you from doing anything. They're just doing what they're told. So there we go. Quick PSA. <laughs> Secondly, one of the benefits to working at Nick's company is that employees can reward other employees with points for work well done or as a form of congratulations. These points can then be redeemed for a whole catalog worth of prizes. One of them is being prepaid cards. So what we plan on doing is cashing in the points that Nick has accumulated over the past, what, year and a half or so? Yeah, that's how it does. And putting them on a prepaid card. And we're hoping that the cash equivalent of those points will pay for a lot of our travel through Italy, including our accommodations, food, and transportation. The final piece of the puzzle for us, though, has been making use of credit cards. There are a whole host of them that are available out there and all of them have different welcome bonuses and different rewards that you can get as a result of specific spends. Before we really get into this though, then we really want to put out a disclaimer. When we're talking about these credit cards, we have been very meticulous, we've done our research and we've been very, very careful about making sure that if we are going to be investing in a credit card, then one, we can make the spends that are required as part of the welcome bonus part of our daily routine. We're not going out of our way to spend any more money than we have to in order to get the rewards that we need. The second thing is that we are always very diligent about making sure that we pay for our credit cards on time as well. We are not getting ourselves into any kind of debt that we cannot afford ourselves, that we cannot manage. In the same way, we do not encourage any of you to go into debt that you cannot pay back. That means we're not encouraging you to max out credit cards or anything like that. We are literally just saying that these are the welcome bonuses that are available here. So if you can fulfill those in a way that can suit your lifestyle, then please go ahead and follow this. Everything 
that we get into with these credit cards is something that we pay off after every month. We are very diligent about keeping on top of our payments. So we encourage you to do the same if you are wanting to get into these kinds of schemes. Another consideration is that we're limiting the number of cards that we have at any one time to avoid juggling too much. These cards all come with welcome bonuses and there are financial requirements to meet each welcome bonus, but because we do not go out of our way to meet the welcome bonuses and simply achieve them, through our usual everyday spending with gas and groceries and subscription services, for example, we can't have too many credit cards because otherwise it would be asking us to spend $1,000 a month on this credit card, $500 a month on this credit card and so on. And we don't wanna take on too much. Once we get a credit card, achieve its welcome bonus and can see that the points have been transferred into our Aeroplan account, we then cancel the card. While we have heard rumors that having many credit cards at once can affect your credit scores, we've seen a lot of videos debunking this. However, we highly recommend that you do your own research, you're careful, and that you only do what you're comfortable with. We haven't seen our credit scores affected at all. They're still very high. Because we want to share this kind of information to you, because we do think it's useful if you are really wanting to get into the travel game, then we are going to spend the rest of this video reviewing the credit cards that we have used on the way to accumulating the aeroplan points that we are planning on spending. With each of the cards that we're going to go through, then we're going to basically layer it by tiers. So we're going to start off with a lower tier, which is going to be something that may be a free card or it may be a low fee. And then it also then provides you with a low welcome bonus as a result, and maybe not too many perks in addition. We'll then have mid tier, which will then be slightly accelerated rates with welcome bonuses, additional incentives, the occasional additional perk, but the fees may be a little bit higher in terms of keeping the card. And then we do also have what we refer to as a higher tier card that we would also like to shed some light on. And this is because in spite of the high fees, then actually the welcome bonus and also the perks that you get with it are in our eyes very much worth it. So we're going to take into account each of these. As you do your own research, then certainly the things that we would want to take into account would be the likes of things like annual fees, welcome bonuses, points accelerators on any spend that you take, as well as any additional perks that you might find useful on your travel journey. There are a couple of other caveats and other things that you do need to take into consideration though. Some of these cards, when you come to apply for them, do have a minimum income requirement, either for you as an individual or as a household. So do be sure to look out for that as part of the terms and conditions. The other part to this is that the welcome bonuses and things like that do change periodically over time. So there might be a limited time offer that you can only take advantage of by a certain date. So if you do see that and you are interested and you are in a position to get it done, then it is always a good idea just to keep an eye out and make sure that you apply in time you can activate the card a little bit later if you need to. And finally, we do also want to put in the caveat that this is not an exhaustive list. We do encourage you to do your own research as we do completely understand that this is applicable to our travel journey. And it may not be something that might apply to other people or might not suit other people in terms of what they want to get out of their travel experience. Generally speaking, as far as research goes, a quick Google search into best travel credit cards for whichever country you are based in should generally do the trick and should be a helpful guide to get you started. Now, when it comes to credit card loyalty schemes, the options are endless. Every major bank has their own credit card loyalty scheme with their own unique perk packages. Equally, every major hotel group has their own associated credit card. As do most major airlines, they also offer their own credit cards. However, from watching YouTube channels such as the Prince of Travel, we've been able to work out what credit card loyalty schemes would suit our needs best, and these were our considerations. We felt that with a round-the-world trip, the biggest expense would be airfare. While certain airline groups do offer an around-the-world ticket, 
they have various conditions and restrictions that did not allow us the flexibility that we wanted with the type of trip that we in particular are planning. While accommodation is of course another a major expense, we were more comfortable with staying in cheaper accommodations like in Airbnbs and hostels, while we were more uncomfortable for paying through the roof for transportation expenses to get us between countries. That's why we counted out the likes of the Marriott Bonvoy credit cards. Once we'd settled on going for cheaper airfares and airline loyalty schemes, then we had to try and figure out which airline loyalty scheme to go for. While there are a number of low-cost carriers that are available in Canada, then unfortunately the vast majority of these airlines are not associated with any larger airline groups, and so therefore the points are not transferable beyond that specific airline. So therefore, we did count out the likes of WestJet and Air Transat for that exact reason. That then narrowed it down to two major groups. One World, which includes British Airways, Qantas, and Cathay Pacific, to name a few, or their main rival, Star Alliance. The major international airline in Canada is Air Canada. Air Canada belongs to the Star Alliance group. While Star Alliance doesn't have a unified loyalty program like One World does with its Avios program, the great news is that any Aeroplan points that we accumulate from Air Canada can be redeemed on any other airline that flies under the Star Alliance banner, including United, Air New Zealand, Lufthansa, Avianca, Singapore Airlines and Turkish Airlines to name a few and having access to such a global network will really help us along our travels. As a result of the research that we did then we did hear from there that Aeroplan aka Air Canada's loyalty scheme is actually one of the best ones for Canadian travelers so that definitely put us on to that. We did consider spreading our earning capacity to various different loyalty schemes at once but we felt like that could be maybe a little bit prohibitive as sometimes you can't transfer points between different loyalty schemes. So with that, we just decided to put all of our eggs into the Aeroplan basket and go from there. In terms of the credit cards that we did end up choosing, a number of our choices were guided by the fact that cards have a minimum income requirement that we just did not meet. For cards that have titles like reserve and privilege, we simply didn't meet their minimum income requirements, so those cards were instantly discounted. If you do meet those minimum income requirements, then you have the ability to achieve higher welcome bonuses and access to an amazing world of incredible perks. Equally, for any cards that have the name business in the title, then the expectation as you apply for it is that there will be an associated company that you have to list upon the application. Therefore, as a result of this, personal use for these cards is out of the question. One of the first cards we got was the Amex Green card. While this is one of the lower return cards, it's also one of the lowest risk options because the card itself is completely free. On this one, you can earn up to 10,000 member rewards points when you spend $1,000 in the first three months of card ownership. That means as soon as you activate your card and start spending on it, you're already earning towards your welcome bonus. However, there are no multipliers on this card, which means that for every dollar you spend, you just get one point. With that, it's worth having this card for the welcome bonus alone, but not much else. But wait a second, you were just talking about Aeroplan. Why are you suddenly mentioning American Express cards? Well, the reason behind this is because the great thing with American Express member rewards points is that they can be converted at a ratio of one to one to any other travel loyalty scheme that you can think of. So with that, then you can convert to Aeroplan, Avios, Marriott Bonvoy, Hilton Rewards, etc. Basically, whatever your jam is by way of loyalty schemes, then you can convert your Amex points to that. So it does mean that this is still a very useful card to go for. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, but they don't accept Amex everywhere. So it's way more of a fab in terms of trying to make sure that I can actually make use of this. 
Yes, to some degree, certain vendors do not accept Amex, but to be honest with you, the network that does accept it is a lot higher than it ever used to be. And equally, in North America in particular, then the usage is relatively widespread. Equally, in certain places, while they don't just accept you tapping your Amex card, then you can actually make use of your Amex card through your Google Wallet, and that then bypasses any restrictions that you might otherwise encounter. So just a little hack for you there. The thing to make sure of with all of this is that you have transferred all of your Amex points to your loyalty scheme of choice, in our case, Aeroplan. You wanna make sure that all of these points are deposited in your loyalty scheme account or our Aeroplan account before you cancel the card because otherwise you are going to lose all of your hard earned points. And no one wants that. However, with any Aeroplan branded card that you may get, then rather than it going into a different loyalty scheme, then the points will just be Aeroplan points which will be directly deposited into your Aeroplan account upon that billing cycle. With that, you don't have to worry about losing your points or any transfers or anything like that. As soon as they are deposited, then that's it. The only thing to bear in mind with deposited Aeroplan points, however, is that you do need to make use of them within two to three years, otherwise they do expire. So do just be conscious of that. When we initially started accumulating points, there was a card called the CIBC Aeroplan Visa. This card was amazing because it was free and gave us 10,000 Aeroplan points with your first purchase. We've been looking on the CIBC website and this card is a little bit difficult to find, but it does still exist. We highly recommend this card because number one, it's free. Number two, you get your 10,000 points almost immediately. For goodness sakes, you could go and spend a dollar at some random store and get your 10,000 points. And once you've confirmed that those points are in your Aeroplan account, you can cancel the card. Easy peasy. One, two, three. <laughs> the final low tier card that we have taken advantage of is the TD Aeroplan Visa Platinum. This does have a annual fee of $89, but there is a rebate on your first year, so you don't have to worry about that if you're going to keep it for any less than 12 months. On this card, you can earn up to 20,000 points, so you get 10,000 points with your first purchase, and then after 90 days, if you've spent $1,000 on this card, then you get another 10,000 points. So this is another great way to earn some quick points. We're now moving on to our mid-tier cards, and the first one that we're going to start with is the American Express Cobalt. It has been dubbed the card for millennials because of the points you get on food and drink, whether that be from Uber, Skip the Dishes, DoorDash, any grocery store, or any restaurant you go to. They've really considered the spending habits of millennials and doubled down on the points you can earn from those expenditures. By getting this card, any purchase you make on food or drink will get you five times the points, which is a staggering return and the best around. Equally, streaming subscriptions will get you three times the points. So just through your regular spending, you can accumulate a huge amount of points. This card is one of the cheapest around at $155.88 a year. It's prorated to $12.99 a month, so that makes it pretty affordable. The welcome bonus that's being offered now isn't the same welcome bonus as when we got it. The welcome bonus that we were able to get was actually slightly better, but I still think it's worth considering. Every month that you spend $500, you'll be awarded 2,500 points, over the course of 12 months or one year, that equals 30,000 points. As we were doing a little bit of research for the purposes of this video, then we actually stumbled across a new mid-tier card, which is an offering from CIBC. This card is called the CIBC Aeroplan Visa Infinite. This is one that we have never had before, but upon looking at all of the welcome bonuses and things like that that you can get from this card, then it does look like it's a very worthwhile investment. The annual fee is $139, but that is waived for the first year. 
you can then get 10,000 aeroplan points upon your first purchase, and then a further 35,000 aeroplan points when you spend $1,000 over the first four months of card membership. Another nifty perk of this is that you also get a free checked bag on any Air Canada round trip, provided that you take at least one per year of card membership. However, do bear in mind that there are minimum income restrictions in order to apply for this card, so do just be mindful of that as you apply for this. Whenever you Google best travel credit cards for Canada, the TD Aeroplan Visa Infinite card comes highly recommended and for good reason. It has a lower annual fee of $139, but you get a rebate for this in your first year of card membership. With this card, you can earn up to 55,000 Aeroplan points. You can earn 10,000 Aeroplan points upon your first purchase, 30,000 points when you spend $5,000 in your first 180 days or six months of card membership, plus an additional 15,000 points when you spend $7,500 in the first year or 12 months of card ownership. It is worth noting that with the last 15,000 Aeroplan points, it's conditional upon you keeping the card for the full 12 months before they pay that out. Most other cards pay out as soon as you've achieved whatever conditions they have set, so this one is a little bit different. Additional perks on this card include a free first checked bag on Air Canada round trip flights, and a $100 rebate on Nexus cards if that's something that interests you. There is a minimum income required on this card, so that's just something to check out and bear in mind before you apply for it. It seems to us that there's not much difference between the TD and CIBC Infinite cards, so it really depends on what you prefer, but we do believe that the CIBC has a little bit of a quicker payout on points. Another mid-tier card option that you might want to consider is the American Express Aeroplan card. The welcome bonus on this one is maybe not quite as strong as when we encountered it, but it is still definitely worth a consideration. It has an annual fee of only $120, and you can earn up to 50,000 Aeroplan points provided that you one, spend $3,000 in the first six months of card membership, which gives you 35,000 Aeroplan points. And then provided that you spend $500 a month for six months, then you can get 2,500 Aeroplan points per month that you achieve this. While the day-to-day -day points multipliers are not worth mentioning in the same way as maybe the COBOL card, sometimes you do get limited time offers that do provide you with additional multipliers. This is something that we ended up taking on board because they were offering very much the same accelerated incentives as the COBOL at the time. So it is definitely worth keeping your ear to the ground in case you can take advantage of a similar kind of offer. If you were to have a business like I do, I'm a self-employed physiotherapist, then it's worth considering a business Amex card. While the annual fee is significantly higher, making it a high tier card, you gain access to incredible perks. That's why we decided to get the Business Platinum card from Amex. While the non-Business Platinum card brings many of the same offerings and perks, its annual fee is $200 more. So that's just something interesting to note. Firstly, you can earn 80,000 Amex points by spending $6,000 in your first three months of card membership. While the annual fee for this card is $500, we are very keen to take advantage of American Express's incredible network of lounges all across the world. They have 1,300 lounges in over 140 countries, which as you can imagine will serve us really well when we're traveling abroad. We feel like this will give us a really nice place to work on our content during our downtime on travel days with access to unlimited free Wi-Fi, as well as the fact that they will have 
unlimited free food and drink and some of the lounges offer really comfortable spaces so that we can take a nap while we're waiting for our next flight. The downside of this card is that the points multipliers are pretty much non-existent. You get 1.25 the points on any dollar spent. However, for our purposes, the benefits of this card far outweigh any of the disadvantages. Also for business owners, you can write off the annual fee on your taxes. This is just one of the business options that is out there. So it's worth doing your own research to see if there's one out there that maybe better suits your needs, whether that's a different annual fee or slightly different perks. There's so many options out there. So take a look around. So that's a rundown of all of the credit cards that we have taken advantage of on our way to achieving this goal. It has taken a little bit of juggling and being very active in making sure that we keep you on top of all of our cards and expenditure, but provided that you give yourself enough time and keep track of it in the same way that we have, then this can really work out in your favor. The final way that we are going to be able to afford to go on this year-long adventure is good old-fashioned savings. We have saved a decent amount of money between the two of us, and we hope that it's going to last us the entire year. We will be keeping ourselves to as low as a daily spend as we can, although we do want to really focus on enjoying experiences, and we're hoping that that will keep us traveling for as long as possible. While Aeroplan points are great, you do need to make sure that you have enough in savings to sustain you for an entire year. We did some research on the internet, however, what that returned was a really large variation in what people recommended that you save for an entire year. So we kind of aimed to save in the middle of that amount each, and we just hope that that gets us by. In a future video, we hope to be able to give you a better recommendation for how much we've saved and if that was sufficient or if it turns out we should have done more or if we could have left earlier because we didn't need as much. But that's the beauty of figuring this out as we go. We hope that this video has been helpful and has provided you with some tips and tricks as to how to do some basic travel hacking. However, we do totally understand that we are by no means experts, so if you yourself have any tips to be able to offer us, which we would thoroughly recommend, then feel free to put those in the comments below. Until then, take care. And keep smiling. You gotta move, dude. Dante, come sit here. We love the fact that you want to join us, but this is not an appropriate time. Dante. We love you. Come on, hey. Hey, come sit here. Come on, buddy. Come here. This is an intriguing place, too. Buddy? Can you stop that? He's gonna bite you. <laughs> You're on video, you do realize that. So if you bite incriminating. me. Incriminating, incriminating. Okay, dude. Right. Oh, bud. Mm. You're so proud. That's very cute. But you still gotta go. How about you come sit here? This is a comfy spot for you. What are you doing? You're saying hi to your public? Is that it? Come on. Oh, buddy. Come sit here. Yes, good boy. There we go. Settle you down, sit down there, man. Settle down there. You sit there. How about that? There Sound go. good? Settle down there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not only did we have the display. <laughs> the display. The what? The display delay. Good job. <laughs> 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 we had the yeah. We, we had the flight. Displayed. The flight was really displayed. Really displayed. <laughs> Couldn't even begin to tell you how very beautifully arranged it was and displayed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <sighs> oh my god. Every major bank has their own credit. <laughs> that net. <laughs> I'm just not on it today. That 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 that. that. I am not on it today. Just get the laughs out, it's fine. Mm. <laughs> this is not Buddy. Good. I'm afraid they're not going to get much out of you other than... Well... So it's not going to help anything. Okay. Yeah. Too many goddamn buzzwords. 
on our way to achieving this goal. Do. Dante's like, my goal is to get outside. Exactly. Screw you and your credit cards. I want freedom. We want freedom too. This is why we're going for this kind of thing. Thank you.